Okay. So yesterday I ended on something somewhat abstract, uh, but I didn't quite finish what I wanted to say. So today I wanted to just quickly finish my thought and do something more concrete. Um, so, uh, so just to summarize, starting with the Hamiltonian vibration, um, we construct uh, something like a classifying map from X into uh, a certain simplicial set, which you can also just think of as a space. Um, so, a certain simplicial set. Actually, it's a con complex. And basically, this this condition just means that you can think of this as being a space. Um, so it's a special set of of a infinity categories, and the point is that well, so so the point point is sent to the Fukai category of the fiber. X here. Okay, so and then I was telling you that, right, so, uh, so, well, the theorem is that uh, the homotopy class, uh, so the homotopy class of this map is independent of choices of perturbation data so in principle it's some kind of it's some kind of an invariant so so is an invariant of the vibration, the homotopian vibration. So then I was trying to uh, briefly tell you how, uh, how one can compute something from this data. And basically, uh, so the idea was, you so you throw away a huge amount of information by extracting from FP. Con vibration over over X, and a con vibration is basically just another way of saying surf vibration. It's kind of a combinatorial analog of a surf vibration, and so so then basically. So then you're just doing topology. So you're just doing do topology. So classical topology. For this vibration. And uh, so if you, if you can detect non-triviality of this, of this uh, sub-vibration, then you know also that your your invariant is 
the, this, this homotopy class is non-trivial. Um, so, and I don't know. So, so, the topology of this vibration. So this basically, uh, so so basically, what we're doing here is we're substituting homological algebra. topology. Although it's a bit more concrete because it's combinatorial. And well, and then you can, so you can detect non-triviality this way, so you can actually do calculations and so, we'll see, profit. <laughs> Um, so, um, right, so, so I was thinking that I should tell you how to do the step one, but then I think that you have forgotten everything that I told you about yesterday, and so this will be just overly abstract. So, so let us postpone this. Uh, so instead, uh, I wanted to tell you, uh, about some important background for the story. Background for these invariants. And so this will be a bit of a change of pace because it will be much more concrete, uh, well, uh, less abstract. So re recall also that in the beginning, so in the beginning, I told you that if I have basically a vector bundle over x, I can projectivize to get, uh, well, to get a projective, projective uh, bundle over x. So in particular, it's a Hamiltonian vibration, and uh, so, so I, I would get some, some kind of, so I would get this kind of classifying map into my abstract space S. And uh, the idea is that uh, this data is a kind of quantization of, uh, of churn von Schragen theory. So this is like, quantization of churn von Schragen theory. I mean, put the Novikov there. Novikov theory. But, so whenever you say that something is a quantization of something, you better have some kind of semi-classical approximation. So, so what I want to tell you today is uh, how to get churn classes from gromov wooten theory. And from, well, not just gromov wooten theory, but certain gromov wooten theory, which is very closely related uh, to the story in the construction of this map. So, so semi-classical approximation. Approximation or how to get churn classes from Gromov Witten theory. Okay, so, uh, so now, so let's suppose we have a monotone symplectic manifold. Monotone. So this means that omega is uh, a positive multiple so maybe k. Okay, and let me suppose that 
homology of M is all in even degrees. So this is just a simplification to get rid of uh, grading. So, uh, so Ritwik told you about quantum cohomology. Uh, the dual notion of that is quantum homology. So quantum homology, which as a vector space is just homology of MQ, and this is ungraded. So I'm not grading this. So just have an ungraded vector space over Q. Uh, so, uh, so, so let me tell you how the product in quantum homology works. So actually, quantum cohomology is, is really just derived from quantum homology. So the way the quantum cohomology product works is you dualize your cycles, you take product in quantum homology, and you dualize again. So this is so quantum homology really is the more fundamental object. So um, <clears throat> okay, so let me tell you how this works. It's just punk radiality. I mean, uh, just the usual punk radiality, uh, classical punk radiality. So, so the point is that, right, I mean, so um, quite often one talks of quantum cohomology, which really is just defined via punk radiality, uh, just utilizing quantum homology product. Um, so, Wait, suppose we have so we ha suppose we have two cycles. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, I mean here I, I suppose it doesn't really matter, so I can say quantum homology. M. Uh, so what I'll do is so so I want I want to give you kind of a geometric description of the product just just to have a bit of uh, something different from what Rithvik told you about. So what I'll do is I'll take uh, the product vibration over S2. So this is, so this is just, well, so this is just M times S2. And so I'll fix three points in the base, Z0, Z1, Z2. And uh, so here in the fiber I have my cycle A, here I may have, mm, here I'll have my cycle B. And then I'm going to look at the moduli space of sections of this uh, trivial vibration. So if I look at class A sections, class A holomorphic section, So as I vary over my, my whole moduli space, I'm going to sweep out a cycle here. And this cycle I'm going to call BA. OK? So maybe a bit more formally, you look at, so you look at the moduli space of sections in class A going through A. And uh, well, here I, I suppose I'm taking smooth representatives or pseudo cycle representatives for uh, for these homology classes um, so right so I have right so I have this moduli space of sections going through a B and I have an evaluation map which goes to M by so evaluate at Z Z2 so evaluate the section at Z2. And then BA is just 
the class of is just Eve lowest star of the fundamental class. Okay. So, so then A star B is defined by sum over A B A. Uh, so this is sum over all section classes. Section classes. And it's finite because of monotonicity. So that's the quantum product. OK. So A, yeah, it's a, A is a section class in M plus. Yes. OK, so, so now I wanted to tell you uh, about the cycle homomorphism. So, Seidel homomorphism. So this goes pi one hem m omega to quantum homology m. Um, so the way this works is if I have a loop. So. Um, so by loop in ham, I can I can get a vibration p gamma p gamma over s two. Uh, basically, by just taking two copies of n times d two. So and then you uh, well then you just glue by by gamma, blue by gamma. Okay, and so so on the boundary, so on the boundary of m cross s one, m cross s one. So I can just use gamma as a clutching map to glue to get a vibration over s two, and and since it's a Hamiltonian loop, uh, we'll get a Hamiltonian vibration. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, in one of the cases, it is a pseudo cycle. So, so you can think of as this being a pseudo cycle, push forward of a pseudo cycle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, right. So. Uh, so. So somewhat analogously to how we define a quantum product, we can define a cycle homomorphism. So I have my vibration. As gamma, sorry, p gamma. Uh, so S two. I mean, it's not a trivial vibration anymore, but I'm just drawing it as a square. Uh, so, so I can look at the moduli space of a holomorphic, sorry, of j holomorphic sections in class A. So, holomorphic section in class A. And as before, as you vary over the moduli space, you're going to sweep out uh, a cycle that it's again called BA. 
uh, and then so and formally is defined just like that just uh, push forward of the evaluation map via the evaluation map uh, and so we define s gamma sum over a b a and this, so this is in quantum homology quantum homology m so of course uh, the crucial point about this is that this is a group homomorphism and uh, to establish that you you have to do uh, you have to do a gluing argument um, I won't get into that. Uh, so a, so a, a here is always class. So a is again as before class A section, uh, section classes, section classes, section classes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, here you don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, there is no constraint. So, the, the point is that this little a and little b give you constraints. Actually, you could do exactly the same thing. You, you, could, you, could take, you, could, you could take, you could fix three points and then put constraint a, constraint b. And then what, what you're going to get is not the quantum product, but a deformed quantum product. So it will be deformed by uh, by this this class gamma. Actually, actually, I think it would be very interesting to study if this is if this is a structure that has any uh, that that's meaningful. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone has. But. <laughs> So, yeah, okay. okay. So, um, right. So, let us kind of slightly reformulate. I mean, uh, if I have a vibration, again, Hamiltonian, then I can also think of S as uh, a homomorphism to homology of M, right? Uh, so, so how does this work? Well, uh, well, give, given an element here, uh, so I can pull back P to get a Hamiltonian vibration over S two, and then do the same thing, right? And so, I would get a map. I mean, you can also think of it more formally as just being. I mean, you can also think of it as just just the composition. To. To. Um, this is just isomorphic to. I one ham S. Yeah. So you can think of formally just the composition or just geometrically the way I the way I told you. So where this is induced by the classifying map. So so classifying map. Okay, so so why is this useful reformulation? Well, because there is an extension theorem. There is an extension uh, psi. Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, it's just pi 2x, right? It's I mean, it, well, it's, it's the 
so these are components of this mapping space. So this is the, I guess I should have said, this is the spherical mapping space. Yeah, so I think I didn't say. So spherical mapping space. Uh, right, so spherical based mapping space. So uh, Muhammad talked about this a lot. Um, sorry? Mm. Sorry? Oh, oh, yeah. Actually, you're not the only one. I get that a lot. <laughs> um, okay, so there is an extension to uh, of S to a ring homomorphism. Psi from homology of omega to x to quantum homology. So where um, so here the product is the Pontryagin product. And, well, here uh, just the quantum product. Um, so, so I should say uh, this basically appears in my in my thesis. Long time ago. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah. So actually, uh, so I actually like to think of of these things of these functionals as homology classes. So. So, the psi. So, if I have a cycle, uh, or just a bit to x, then I define QCK F. S psi f. So, so psi gives the top uh, kind of kind of a top cohomology class. So we'll see in a second why this is a useful way of thinking about it. So um, so right. So in this way. So in this way. Uh, our vibration, so for our vibration, we have cohomology classes, QC star in, in uh, so it's cohomology, make it to X with values in quantum homology of M. Okay. So, uh, so let me tell you how uh, to define these cohomology classes. So, uh, well, so suppose. Suppose I have a smooth cycle, smooth. So, uh, so basically, you can think of this as a kind of as a bouquet of spheres in in X. So here I have base point. Uh, so in particular. So I mean, I, so you, so so this you can reinterpret as a vibration. Uh, so I get a vibration that I'm going to call P F. It has fiber P gamma. So so let me write here gamma. 
So gamma is a so gamma is a class, spherical class. So you're looking at base spherical space in in this class. Yeah. Uh, right, but then I reinterpreted it as this. So for every vibration, I get S like this. Homology. So pi zero is pi zero is of course just H zero of the space. Uh, well, not exactly. You have to. It's the group ring. So. So H0 of this, sorry, H0 of omega 2x is the group ring over Q of pi 0 of omega 2x. Right, so yeah, if you take the group ring over Q of this, you get H0. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, so on H0 level, it's basically just, I mean, it's just a tautological extension of the saddle homomorphism to, to a group ring map. So you have a group homomorphism, you just pass the group rings over Q. So, right. So, uh, right, so, uh, so given data of, a such, of such a smooth map, uh, I can think of having, of getting a vibration of a B where fiber is itself a vibration, but now over its two. So this is a, this is a M vibration, M bundle over S2. Uh, right, so here I still, I still have this data. So I, I always have this data of a Hamiltonian vibration. Okay. So I mean, uh, uh, just informally, I mean, you just have a family of spheres. For each sphere, I can pull back uh, my vibration over P. So I get a vibration over a sphere, and I have a B family of such vibrations. So I can, so I would get. Smooth vibration with fiber, uh, a vibration over S2, and base B. Right? And from this, I can likewise, so this is basically the same as an M vibration with the same total space, but over, but over B times S2. So basically, uh, so this is because this is a vibration, but it has a rather special structure group. The structure group of the vibration uh, is the group of a certain subgroup of Hamiltonian automorphisms of this M bundle over S2. So because of that, you can project again to get, uh, to get an auxiliary vibration like this. And this is just a Hamiltonian vibration. So this is just, again, a Hamiltonian vibration. Or even, even, even simpler, so what is, so, I, so even more explicitly, uh, so starting from this map, I get a map. So PF is just the pullback of P. Right. Sorry, here? Yeah, just X. I mean, this is a junction or whatever. I mean, <clears throat> so, 
So, uh, right. So, uh, yeah, I was just explaining kind of a more uh, more direct way to get this vibration, this homotopy vibration. Okay. So, um, right. Okay. So, I, I, so I want to define this this QCK. Um, and right. So, so let me draw the following picture. So, the point is that from from these pictures, it's clear that we have so we have uh, a natural embedding. M times B into PF. So basically, because uh, um, right, I mean, or maybe just from from here, the, the point is that uh, uh, what I want to say. Uh, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's easier from this picture. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so all of my spheres, they have, they're based at star, right? And so uh, when you pull back, you have a canonical trivialization of, uh, of these vibrations, of these M bundles over S2, over the, the, the base point corresponding to star, right? I mean, just, just because everything goes to star, so when you pull back, you have a canonical trivialization over, over, uh, over a point in S2, which is which is mapped to to star. And so you get such a such an embedding. <clears throat> right. Okay, so um, so then I have a picture like this. Let me go to the second blackboard. Here I have S2, here I have B, and I'm really bad with pictures. Yeah. Um, something like okay. So this is supposed to be uh, a cube. Um, Right. So I have, uh, say, S2 here, B here, and the fiber is M. So, so, so this cube is supposed to supposed to be visualization, vis, visualization of PF of this vibration. And so, basically, the idea is for every, ah, yeah, okay. So if I have have a little B here, maybe use a different color. So I have a little B here. So uh, so so I have B times S two in the base. So over this B times S two, I have a Hamiltonian vibration. And then I can look at class A sections. So, maybe. Okay, so some class A sections. So, so again, I have a moduli space, and as I vary over the whole moduli space, and in the moduli space, this b, this little b, is allowed to vary. So, I'm going to sweep out. I'm going to sweep out uh, a cycle. 
that I'm going to call BA tilde. Yeah, so this is PF. So this as so as before, you have a. Yeah, let me just finish this. So it's a class A holomorphic section over B. Well, it's two times B. Yeah. I'm thinking what? Yes. Yes, right, right. Right. Yes, yes. So you have a so you have a base point in S2 which is which which is mapped to the star. And so I have a right. So I have a corresponding copy of B here, and so this embedding corresponds to well that copy of B. Uh, yes. Why it's trivial? You're asking. It's trivial because everything is mapped to the point, so you have a canonical trivialization. I mean, think of. I mean, think think of a map. I mean, if I have a map. Z to, Z to I don't know Y, which, and I have a vibration of a Y. But Z maps everything to a point, so so, so so the pullback is a canonical trivialization. Natural trivialization corresponding to the trivialization of uh, the fiber um, over that point. So, I mean, okay. It, uh, I mean, it's natural. It is natural up to a choice of the trivialization of the vibration over this point. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I should. Clarify that. <laughs> okay, so so we have this picture, um, right? So so I was saying this this is a picture for PF, and then uh, I'm looking at holomorphic sections. So they're sections, not over the so the the sections not over b times s two, but over a little b times s two, where b is varying, right? And then you uh, so as before, you look at the whole moduli space. Of such things where everything is varying, B is varying, uh, and um, you're going to sweep out a cycle here. So B A, so B A is a class in homology B times M. Yeah. So, so this is kind of my my base point, and this is so in this phase I have a. I have a trivialization of this. So I have a trivialization of this phase uh, by B times M. So I can say that my my class is in homology B times M. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, Except, um, yeah. Except, except. Uh, well, the point is, that my output should be in quantum homology of M. So at, at the moment, I have a class in homology B times M. So basically, what I do is, well, homology B times M is is the tensor product. So my B A tilde, uh, well, you know, it's some stuff, and then you're going to have 
uh, class of a point tensor BA plus some other stuff. So just, just write out A in the natural basis of the tensor product. And so then I'm going to define BA as, as this, uh, well, my B, mm. so, this, so this, is the, this, is the, this is what I'm interested in. I'm going to be interested in this BA, in this component. So QCK of F is going to be defined by um, sum over A, BA, where BA is like this. So this is like the top. So this is like the top quantum class. Quantum characteristic class. So you can you can ask, well, what about the other components? So the, the other the other things here. Well, they are contributions to lower degree quantum classes. Um, so these, these things contribute to lower degree quantum classes. And so for the moment, I don't care about them. I just want the quantum class, the top quantum class. Right, and so this expression is in quantum homology. Quantum homology. Okay, so, uh, so any questions about this definition, about the picture or anything? I mean, it's, it, is a bit, it is a bit complicated. The, the picture. Class A. So, so A as A as before is in. Uh, so it's a section class. So it's an H two sect. So here, P gamma. P gamma. So P gamma is the is is this thing here. Okay, so, so, so now, uh, yeah, so, so now, I mean, so I've already used the word quantum characteristic class, so I should justify this somehow. Uh, so the point is that there is a stabilization procedure of these quantum characteristic classes, which, give you, which gives you churn classes, which justifies the name. So, so stabilization. So, uh, right, so, well, I mean, so, so are these quantum characteristic classes? So they're, they're classes in cohomology of, of X with values in quantum homology M. Um, and so th there is a kind of stabilization which, uh, that I'm going to describe now, which, which is going to give you churn classes out of this construction. Some limit, it's like semi-classical approximation. Um, get some water. Okay, so 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 let us specialize to x b u r, and then our vibration. Just CPRR minus one. Just the the projectivization of the universal uh, the universal vibration over BUR, and um, all right. So 
So we have we have these classes QCK in cohomology of omega two B U R with values in quantum homology C P R minus one. So this is what this is just 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 specializing the construction. We get this, and then the theorem is that. Man, I think I need more space for this. So, ah, it's okay. I guess it's okay. So the theorem is that um, so there are cohomology classes. On omega two bu, so bu is the so the infinite limit of burs, right? So this is just limit. Um, and a diagram, and a commutative diagram. So you have um, omega two. Let me just recall how I write this. So right. So so H K. So then I have um, quantum homology. Quantum homology CP infinity. Indeed. <laughs> so this is a formal object. Uh, so I'll, I'll describe it shortly. But you can think of it as kind of geometrically corresponding to quantum homology of CP infinity. Uh, omega two on the right. Oh yes, thank you. And here we have quantum homology CPR minus one. And here you have a certain certain map. Uh, it's not quite a ring homomorphism, but. Um, Mm, just a moment, right? So it's 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 a ring homomorphism in a certain range, um, uh, and I should say here that so right so it's, it's commutes. So if so if R is much greater than K, R is much greater than K. Okay. Okay, so is the statement well? So I, I haven't told you what what is what is quantum homology CP infinity, and I, have, I haven't told you what J is, but modulo that is the statement clear? Okay, so quantum homology CP infinity. So, sorry? Yeah. Well, you have the universal CR bundle, and then you just fiber wise, projector wise. Uh, did I write M? Oh, yes. It's CPR minus one. Oh, 
Oh. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't, you wouldn't ask that. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. Well, so, uh, yeah, no, so, yeah, so the point is that, uh, yeah, so remember I had, like, I had two ways to think about PF. I could think of it as a bundle with fiber P gamma over B. And so in that case, you, so your, your cohomology classes are really characteristic, they're the characteristic classes for this vibration. All right? Uh, so the fiber is no longer M, it's, it's a Hamiltonian vibration over S2. Uh, right, so, so, that's, so this is why, right, so, so this is why, so the duals on omega 2, I mean, these QCK classes, they go from omega 2 um, VUR, uh, not from BUR. But the point is that, so, so a God-like thing happens, uh, touch of God. <laughs> We have uh, bot periodicity, so omega 2 bu is just homotopy equivalent to bu, and so you get classes uh, in cohomology of bu with values in quantum cohomology CPR minus one, uh, and it is these classes. Sorry, this is CP infinity. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, CP infinity. So. So after you plug about periodicity, homology classes of BU in this coefficient ring. And it is these classes that are basically churn classes up to kind of some quantum correction. I mean, which is kind of meaningless, but. Uh, the QCK. Yeah, they tell you how twisted, how twisted this thing is, as a p gamma vibration over p over b. QCK zero. Uh, well, not, not much really. Uh, well, just like for churn classes, I mean, churn classes also do not determine the. The complex vector bundle. So, if all the churn classes vanish, you will not get a vanishing of the of the bundle. But, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're right. I mean, it depends what you mean by zero. They all. I mean, all the QCs will be trivial. Yeah. So, right, so, uh, okay, so first, what is quantum homology of CP R minus uh, one? So, so just as a vector space, you can think of this as degree R polynomials over Q um, with vanishing constant term. constant term. Um, so expressions like CI, QI. So, so Q, is, Q is my formal parameter for formal variable. Uh, so in, in Q. Uh, and so the multiplication, so if we identify QI as CP, the class of CPI minus one, uh, so then Q times QI is QI plus one. If uh, one plus i is less than or equal to r minus one, I think. 
So, right. So I, I might have to I might have to fix this, but so let, let's see, let's see geometrically how this works. Actually, I think we haven't done yet any concrete calculations of quantum homology or cohomology. So this will be. I don't know. Did you do any? Yeah. So so you'll have a concrete calculation. Um, the point is that so so the blackboard the blackboard is CPR CPR minus one. So if I have so Q corresponds to a point. QI is CPI minus one. So we have. CPI minus one, and then uh, so the point is that uh, so given this condition, uh, the so uh, if um, you can put this in general positions so that they don't intersect, so the the classical intersection is zero, and then um, so so the quantum product, the quantum intersection, well. Uh, uh, so the quantum intersection, the contribution to the quantum intersection from degree one lines is something like this. So, so degree one lines in CP R minus one. So it sweeps out C, so I mean, this is just a copy of embedded copy of CPI, right? So the sweep out. So the quantum product is exactly so is exactly this space, this cycle, which is which is obtained by sweeping out, uh, you know, from <clears throat> the sweep out of these degree one lines which intersect the point and CPI minus one. So this is exactly the contribution in degree one. So this is so this is just CPI, and uh, on the other hand, there are no other contributions. So uh, no other contributions. So high degree curves cannot contribute for dimension reasons. Uh, for dimension reasons. So in this case, the, the quantum product is extremely simple. So you get, you get this, this identity. So Q times QI is QI plus one. Yeah. Well, uh, um, well, the point is that so the point is this this condition ensures that the classical intersection product vanishes. So only the quantum only the quantum part survives. So I don't really know exactly how to. Well, I, I, no, I mean, the, to, the, the classical part of this product is, is, is trivial. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, right. So I, I was going to write this. So, so QI, so by associativity. QI, QJ is Q, QI plus J if I plus J. So this is just by associativity. So yeah, um, but again, again, you have to be in this in this stable range. So in the range with a Okay. So, so 
Where is A star B? This is a, this is a Q's. No, but but there, there are these. So QIs are identified with CPI minus one. So they're the product isn't everything, right? Because we have so our quantum homology is just it's, some, it's yeah it's yeah it's it's just ungraded quantum homology, just a vector space. Uh, yeah, I, well, except that uh, since except it's always trivial here, in, in with this condition. Yeah. Sure, sure. I, I think that's. I think he was asking something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, right. So, so the point is that we can, so we can take just co-limit of vector spaces, uh, co-limit over R, so this is uh, basically a polynomial ring in Q without, uh, so, so this means, uh, mod out the constant polynomials. And so, um, right, so, so let's complete this. So complete this to, to Q, Q, Q inverse. So just basically Laurent polynomials, so Laurent polynomials in Q. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take this as the definition of quantum homology CP infinity. Right, so so why does this make sense? So so basically uh, Right, so if, you, if you're now in CP infinity, so the blackboard is CP infinity, well, uh, so here I have CPI minus one. So uh, formally, you can expect that the, the product of a point and CPI minus one is again CPI now in, in CP infinity. So of course, if you do this with analysis, you might run into some problems, but formally it makes sense, right? And what about inverses? Well, uh, uh, right. So, what, what, is, what, what does Q inverse represent? So, Q inverse. So, Q inverse you can think of representing. Again, this is formal. Uh, um, it's a. Uh, so it's it's the um, how do I say this? It's the I mean, it's the limit so it, so, so you have so you have like a hyperplane embedding and then you take the limit over R. So you have like a co-dimension. You have a co-dimension co-dimension one cycle in CP infinity. So kind of quarter mention one cycle. Um, so it represents quarter mention one cycle. Anyway, this is just some formal geometry. I mean so algebraically this is this is what we're doing. Okay. 
So, right, so, uh, and J, so I, I mentioned there is a map J, so you have, well, so you have obvious maps J to CP infinity, oops, quantum homology, CP infinity, and uh, J is multiplicative in a certain range. So if uh, I don't want to say actually, um, right, if polynomial degree, polynomial degree. So it's less than or equal to r minus one, right? So this is a polynomial degree. So, um, so you can imagine that in a limit it sort of becomes multiplicative. Okay, so. Uh, so anyway, so uh, so the second theorem is that uh, these classes, these classes uh, in this in this first theorem, are algebraically independent. And generate the cohomology of omega 2 du, which is of course just du by but periodicity. So moreover, QCK is just CK times QK. Uh, QCK infinity, right? Uh, yeah, the class is QCK infinity. So, you, uh, so this is just uh, scalar multiplication by QK. So you get classical churn classes. Okay. So, um, how much time do I have? I I think that the the clock is not working. So it says. Well, I can start now, so I have an hour 25. <laughs> Five minutes? Oh, okay. So, it's fi fi five minutes, you said. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to say uh, a few words about uh, connection between uh, what I talked about yesterday. So, okay, so yesterday and in the beginning of today's talk as well, so we have this, you know, vibration. So actually, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, well, um, so you have a vibration. And uh, so you get from this some classifying map from X to the space S. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, today, so this, is, so this is one thing you get. The other thing you get is these classes QCK. Um, uh, and so let me just write them as functionals. So it's natural to ask, is there a relation? Okay. So the answer is yes, but it's so it, it is a bit. Uh, uh, there are some black boxes involved, but so basically, uh, so from the from the first map, so the first. So from this, so from, so we get pi k minus two omega two x star two, don't want to say, right, pi k s fuk m. So, uh, right, so th this just, right, I mean, this just means homotopy groups based at this point. So remember, our S is a space of infinity categories. So its points are infinity categories. So, so you're looking at pi ks, fuk m. Okay, and then there is a map I'm going to call T. And so, so, so this is the black box. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just say here some words derived Morita theory of Toyn. So there's a map here to Hotschild homology, and so there's some grading shift, something like. 2 minus k fuk m. And of course, by Konsevich conjecture, this is supposed to be quantum homology, quantum homology m. Konsevich. So combining, we get this map, say t tilde, which goes from by k minus 2 of this to quantum homology m. Sorry? Yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm not grading things, I, I better not grade anything. <laughs> uh, So, right, and uh, so of course this this T tilde uh, induces uh, a ring homomorphism. So homology of omega two. Yeah, let's get rid of this now. To on the homology M. Well, so how does how do how do we how do I go from here to homology of the spherical base loop space? So the point is that since I'm working rationally, uh, so this is rational homology here. So. Uh, since uh, so, since I'm over Q, um, uh, this these homology groups form a Hopf algebra, and then there's a classification of by Milner-Mohr of rational Hopf algebras, which basically tells you that everything here is generated by spherical classes. So, image of the Gurevich homomorphism, 
And moreover, because this is the second, because this is the second base loop space, uh, there are no interesting relations. So it's actually freely generated by spherical classes. So specifying maps on homotopy groups like this will, will also specify a map like this. So this is basically by, by Milner Moore. So, right, so, so starting from here, get, I get, so I get this, which is, which is like the second arrow. So of course it's natural to expect that these are the same. So I, I think I'll stop here. I have no idea. Well, the, pro the problem is that there, is, there are these black boxes. I mean, I don't understand this. Uh, this, this, this map, for example. Uh, uh, right, or because, because you're saying that Mm, yeah, maybe, yes, I think you're right. I think it has to be simply connected. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so maybe, yeah, so, so maybe X should be simply connected, yeah. Okay. You're right, so, yeah. But, so, yesterday, you, started the lecture by that theorem of Novikov. I mean, rational Pondriagin classes are topological invariant. So now, I mean, now after this discussion, how do I draw the parallel? So suppose you have computed the quantum characteristics. Expect there what sort of invariant? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I so so I would hope that. Well, I mean, either possibility is kind of interesting, but. But I would hope that uh, these, these quantum characteristic classes are also topologically invariant. Um, yeah. Um, topologically invariant. So, so, in, so in particular, well, I, I would hope that this data, so, uh, so the data of homotopy class of this map is topologically invariant. So that's what I would hope. So, I, I'm, oh, sorry, I, I, I mean, so, yeah, so I, I mean here when you have a smooth manifold, you take the tangent bundle, you complexify it, projectify, projectivize it, you get, you get a vibration like this, and then uh, the corresponding classifying map, I would hope to be uh, a topological invariant of the smooth manifold. Yeah. But, but of course, the other possibility is also interesting, but uh, the problem is that, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, say again? Ah, sure. Well, okay, so let's... Right, so... Okay, so we have... So we have a smooth manifold. So then you take... So you have so you have P, which is P, T, M, tensor C. So, th so this is a uh, well. So this this is this vibration, Hamiltonian vibration. So then they have a map F P from M. Well, I changed my notation a little bit. I used to call this X, but anyway, into into here. So so then what what I would hope is that if so if I have um, a diffeomorphism, sorry, a uh, homeomorphism. So let's call this P, right, PM. Okay, so if I have a homeomorphism like this, then uh, FPM. 
then if I do f p m two, so the class of f p m two is the class of f p m one composed with phi. So, so, so this would, this would be the meaning of topological invariance. So this is a homeomorphism. I mean, so you were talking about syntactic form, but the point is that, uh, right, so in this case, so you projectivize, so the structure, I mean, the structure of this Hamiltonian vibration uh, is independent of any choices that you make, Hermitian structure or whatever. So uh, as a Hamiltonian bundle, this is well-defined up to isomorphism. I mean, I mean, strictly speaking, strictly speaking, uh, I should right. I should take a Hermitian metric. So then you uh, you, you projectivize, you you get the uh, uh, well, you get you get a vibration uh, uh, right. You get like a um, right. Well, you right. You, you pick a Hermitian metric, then you reduce reduce the structure group to U U R. Then you, when you projectivize, you get a vibration with structure group P U P U P U R, and the isomorphism type of this vibration is independent of the choice of the Hermitian metric. And so that's my, the class of my Hamiltonian bundle. Let's thank the speaker. Okay.